What's up everyone, 5280 Refurb here, back at you again with a new episode. So in this episode, I wanted to talk about a few things that I don't like about this reef tank, why and what I would do different. So it's kind of a little bit of a rant on my mistakes with this tank and what I think is going on with it. So yeah, here we go. So basically, one of the first things I would say I would do different um, would be that I would like to have put the tank even further away from the wall than it is now. I thought I gave it enough room to get behind the tank, you know, or reach back there or something like that. I gave it a good eight inches, but in all honesty, that's really not enough. I Next time I do set up a tank, I would really like to be able to get completely behind the tank. Um, like scraping the back glass, I have a super long scraper and it's like odd angles and stuff like that because of the rock work when scraping the back glass. So I can't get all of it. Um... Also, this little fish you're seeing right here uh, went to the LFS to pick up some fish food and my son was with me and he saw it and he was like, Dad, can we please get it? Can we please get it? So ended up picking up this new addition into the tank. We'll see how it does. If it doesn't get bullied or killed by the other fish, uh, we'll probably end up picking up like five or six more since they are a schooling fish. And uh, yeah, I think they're a beautiful little fish. So, in any case, pushing the tank up forward would definitely help me out a lot, and if I need to work on the overflow, if I need to do any other type of maintenance behind the tank, that would just make it so much easier to get back there. And um, next time around, I am thinking of putting power heads on the back of the tank, like some MP40s, and to be able to access them, I think would be very, very important um at least the dry sides and even the wet sides you know being having to reach all the way over the tank and then down on the back wall would be pretty annoying and i don't think i would do that so that's mainly the reason why there's no power heads back there right now so that would be one thing that i would definitely change on my next tank or this tank if i could now, the other thing would be having a sand bed. Now, when I initially set up this tank, it was a bare bottom. Um, I put uh, ABS sheets on the bottom glass, and then I put my rock work on that. But because I was having issues with dinoflagellates and just the overall stability of the tank, I ended up deciding that, you know what? to hell with it and I'm gonna get some sand so I ended up adding sand and at that I kind of went against my own intuition I usually use the Carib C uh, reef grade special uh, but my LFS didn't have that stuff that had the ocean direct and it was the biggest part particulate size sand they had and I went with that because I was just trying to get things done faster and if we all haven't learned something, doing something fast in this hobby is definitely wrong. Um, I added that and just ever since then, uh, you see in the videos that my sand bed, like there's a hill there, nothing in another spot, and another spot there's a big dune and things like that. So it gets pushed around and I do have a little bit of sandstorms here and there and it's annoying because it does get blown around into my coral like into the SPS colonies um, so I have to blow that off weekly and that does cause like cyano to build up in those spots or create dead spots in the coral you know because it's sand and detritus just being blown up into the coral so that is definitely one of my big regrets that I have with this tank is having the sand in there 
and I could slowly start removing the sand, which is something that I'm really, really debating right now. But I do have a lot of wrasses, like my leopard wrass and my chorus wrass, that do like to sleep in the sand. So I'm trying to figure that out. Maybe I'll like leave the sand that's in between the rock work that kind of doesn't get pushed around too much for them to have at least some kind of bed to sleep in. So I'm not too sure how I'm going to go about that, but if I could redo it, I definitely wouldn't uh, add the sand in there for sure. Um, next up is going to be my Rockscape. So, you know, I was watching Fish of Hex's videos and I loved his islands. His uh, He had three or four islands and I loved that idea and I thought I would do the same. And I kind of built my islands, and I thought, hey, this would be a lot of space, blah 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 But it ended up not being what I thought it would. A lot of the surface area is inside of caves, and it's just wasted rock work, like wasted space, I guess you can say. Because uh, I'm not going to really put corals inside of those caves, there's barely any light in there, you know? I could do like some NPS stuff inside of there, but then that would kind of take away the caves from the fish to be able to hide in and swim through. So I would definitely redo it, do it kind of like I used to, which would be like make three, maybe four platforms and then have all of them connecting and have uh, arches and overhangs and stuff like that. So that's definitely a big one for me. I just, I liked it in the beginning, but as time went on, I, I, it's definitely not something I like very much. I think I could have done a much better job and I'm going to st stick to the old ways of doing it. So yeah, I'm sure some people could look at it and be like, no, it looks good. And I think we as reefers, when we see somebody else's tank, we always appreciate it much more than we appreciate our own tanks but that is also because we see our own tanks all the time compared to somebody else's that we get to see once in a while um yeah so that's the rock work now another thing that i definitely regret and uh would do different would be getting a calcium reactor um you know in the beginning when i was setting up this tank I thought I would need a calcium reactor, so I ended up spending a whole bunch of money. I got, like, the Reef Octo big old 9-inch, the CR220 or whatever reactor, which is, like, 900 bucks. And then I got the Camo or FXSTP continuous doser. That's, like, 300 bucks. You know what I mean? And then I got a CO2 tank and a regulator. And then I also, on top of that, got a additional chamber to kind of help it gas off and things like that. So in altogether, it was like fifteen hundred bucks, maybe seventeen hundred bucks, um, that I spent getting this calcium reactor set up that has never ran a single day. I still am dosing this tank with calcwasser. I am not. There's there's been no need for me to use the calcium reactor. Um, once in a while, I do need to top up the calcium a little bit, but I just do that with simple two part. It's cheap and I do it once and then the calcium stays there for a very long time and then it slowly drops back down. So yeah, definitely not going to be doing that again. And I will definitely be sticking to, uh, running Kalkwasser, um, at super saturation throughout the night for basically my evaporation rate which at this point is 5200 milliliters and it's still keeping strong my alkalinity has been rock solid hasn't moved much at all whatsoever so that would be my next thing now the other thing would be fish selection so with this bigger tank, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get some bigger fish. I really like wrasses. I'm going to get some beautiful wrasses and 
get some bigger tangs, you know, things like that. And it's going to be awesome. It's going to be dope. Well, I ended up picking up those bird wrasses, which, I mean, don't get me wrong. Very beautiful fish. The male bird wrasse is the blue-green one. He's very large. And then the female bird wrasse is the black and white one with uh, the dots on her. And they're gorgeous fish. They swim all the time. But the problem is, I literally cannot do any kind of cleanup crew in, in this aquarium besides urchins because of those two wrasse. I ended up buying like 300 hermits from my LFS and dropping them into the tank. Not a single one survived. Those wrasses, like especially that, that large male, is very smart. He would pick up the shell and then he would smash it against the rocks until the hermit would come out and then he would just pop. Nice little snack. So those two fish are kind of limiting me on my cleanup crew. I even put some Nasarius snails, um, pretty large ones, into there. And he literally was able to rip them off the glass, flip them over, and eat them. So $20 snacks are not appreciated, you know? <laughs> So that would be my biggest things. I would definitely change my fish selection. And another big thing would be, I would change my coral selection. You know, I was thinking of going with named stuff and so on and so forth and cool corals and kind of staying away from like setosas and, and other things like that, which really limited me on my selection. And I just feel like, my tank's kind of bland. I do have some bright spots. And I mean, some of the corals do need to grow in, but they are slow growers. But yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with my tank right now. As always, guys, I appreciate you guys watching. You guys have a wonderful day and keep on reefing.